are you doing today, Wildcats? Coming to you not live from my room, it is Athena Sarmiento, your host, and I am happy to announce the first show of Whitney High Live this year, Quarantine Edition. We have a lot of things to unravel today, starting with the celebration of Latinx slash Hispanic Heritage Month, featuring a few members from All Us. <laughs> I'm here with a few cabinet members from All Us, and we're here to learn more and celebrate Hispanic and Latinx Heritage Month. So if you guys could introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Kaylee Pedroza. I'm the president of All Us. Hi, I'm Maya Alcantara, and I'm the vice president of All Us. Yay! I love having you guys here. Thank you for being here. So, I mean, let's be real, though. What are some stigmas and stereotypes within your community that you find to be untrue about yourselves? Uh, so I find the way that we're portrayed in TV shows or movies often gives people the idea that we're lazy and or uneducated because of the roles that Latinxes are usually given. But I think, I personally think that Latinxes are some of the hardest working people that you'll ever meet since they're willing to do the jobs that no one else is uh, willing to do in order to support their families, like how so many of us are working in the fields and just picking fruit. Speaking on behalf of people with immigrant parents, we work hard at everything we do in order to make everything that our parents sacrificed for us worth it. Thank you so much. That was so interesting to hear. So then how have Hispanics contributed to American society? Uh, well, Latino people have actually contributed to American society in a multitude of ways. For instance, Hispanics helped desegregate schools before there was Brown versus Board of Education, which helped uh, desegregate schools nationwide. There was Mendes versus Westminster in which a judge declared that California could no longer segregate its school system. Also, a big way that we uh, contribute to our society every day is farm workers. The majority of farm workers are Latinx slash Hispanic, and they're the reason we get to eat what we eat every day. Thank you so much, Maya. So, we've been throwing around all these words, so just to clear any confusion, what's the difference between Hispanic, Latino, and Spanish? Well, Latino people are people who were either born or have ancestors from Latin America, while Hispanic people are people who originate or have ancestors from Spain or other Spanish-speaking countries. And Spanish people are just people who originate or have ancestors from Spain. So, for example, people from Brazil would be considered Latino, but they wouldn't be considered Hispanic as they don't speak Spanish. So, before we leave, are there any recommendations of books, movies, or TV shows to inform everyone even more about issues within the Latinx and Hispanic community? I find that it's very rare for people to talk about uh, mental health issues in the Latinx community, especially if your parents weren't born in the U.S. So for that, I would recommend The Color of My Mind, Mental Health Narratives from People of Color by Vior Vargas. And actually a more lighthearted and comedic um, way to learn about issues within our community would be through the remake of One Day at a Time. And as this show deals with uh, various issues such as workplace sexism, immigration, and PTSD. Thank you guys so much for being here and learning and celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month with all of you. And I hope we will see you guys next time. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Now, with all of us stuck at home, here's Eli teaching us a few tips on tricks on living life quarantine style. Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of Cooking with Eli. And today I will be teaching you how to make ramen fried rice out of any package of instant ramen or noodles that you have lying around at home. Well then, let's get started. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is make sure you crush up the noodles. And next you want to add the crushed noodles into a bag where you can add the water and the seasonings. Now beat your eggs before you start frying. And so now let's start frying. So first you want to heat up your pan and throw in some oil in it. I like to use sesame oil. And after that's heated up quite a bit, my pan was actually already hot. Then you want to throw in your noodles that you were letting sit on the side. And make sure to cook them thoroughly just however you want them. After your noodles have fried quite a bit, next you want to add in your one cup of rice. And remember that leftover rice is easier to use because it is drier. Once your ramen and rice start to really come together, then you want to add any seasonings that you like, such as garlic, salt, pepper, or even extras such as spam or any other kind of meat. Once your seasonings have been thoroughly incorporated into your fried rice, then you want to start adding your scrambled egg into the fried rice. 
I like to push my fried rice to the side and then pouring in the scrambled egg. I believe that it is best to start mixing your fried rice before the egg gets a chance to cook thoroughly so that while it's still in the liquid form it gets to mix with the rice and once it cooks it really makes it super sticky and ties it all together. Throwing in your egg should be the last thing you do so after this you're basically done and all you need to do is throw it in a plate or a bowl and eat it. I always like to add for a cake on the top of my rice. And here's the final product. Thanks guys for watching and remember you can add whatever ingredients you want to truly make it your dish. Mmm yummy. Cheese! Thank you Eli, but are you still bored at home? Because up next we have STEM Club teaching us how to make homemade lava lamps. Ever since the start of 2020, there's been an ongoing social movement advocating in protest against many incidents of police brutality. May 26, Minneapolis, first 2020 protest. In response to the murder of George Floyd, Police officer Derek Chauvin knelt on Floyd's neck for nearly eight minutes. We asked some members of the WHS community about their opinions and this is what they said. Today, folks, don't forget Girl Up has a journal meeting today, October 2nd at 2.30 p.m. Thank you guys so much for joining us and we will see you guys next week.